since the only place that they'll be able to afford to go really is MATC and students are looking for a higher, more higher degree than um, what MATC is offering. So I'm not saying that it's not, a, it's not a bad school or anything, but I think MATC also can play a better role in, um, cause there's a lot of stigma on, on Milwaukee Area Technical College as far as it um, not, uh, a lot of kids come out of high school and they feel like, oh, MATC is just like high school all over again. And I think just by having a stigma like that on the uh, community college is detrimental to students um, who actually have opportunity to go there. And because um, there's some new programs that are there that actually let students transfer all of their credits to UWM. And that's something that a lot of a lot of community colleges don't offer directly to UWM, but we need to get the uh, the stereotyping off of, U, off of MATC too, to be able to let students know it's okay to go to MATC, get a two-year degree, get something, you know, and I think that uh, um, the university, I know for sure that it's not for everybody, but um, it's not that you shouldn't try, you know, everybody should try, but, you know, we know that it's not for everybody, so um, I think that definitely we need to... Um, Get out, get the whole community involved from MATC to the community centers, um, the police to you know make sure that they look at scanning the streets and making sure that during the day they're not seeing um, juveniles out in the street um, and get them back in school. I mean, when and right now it's like it seems like everybody's focus right now is throwing kids in jail instead of like giving them education and giving them jobs. So, I mean, I don't see why people are trying to really do so much to attack the kids. I think that we need to question um, social work issues within the family, because I believe that even uh, a lot of people, there is a lot of uh, non-parental involvement going on right now. Parental uh, Parents aren't involved, involved in their uh, child's education like they should be, but I think that um, it's more than a neglect issue. It's, it's more of it's a lot of social services intervention that needs to be going on. I think people are too quick to criminalize people and um, and treat them as criminals and, and um, as neglectful parents instead of seeing what's wrong at home. How can we help you and help your child get back in school? I think that's a, definitely a huge issue. So, um, are a lot of MPS students, uh, from uh, your perspective? coming to UWM? I mean, are they doing that, that kind of bridging from, they're going to uh, M M MATC rather and then coming to UWM or is it, I mean? Mm, I wouldn't say that a lot of students are coming to UWM and um, I, I don't see when I'm out in the community, I don't see a whole lot of UWM out in the community either. I see them at, um, what was it like? I see them at basketball games or, or like hockey games or something. I can see UWM banners all in the background at these games. And I'm like, wow, like why don't they purchase like that as a billboard and um, market that to inner city youth on all these empty um, uh, billboards that's out in the community. They need to market the kids. They got to do something. I mean, UWM is not doing I have never seen um, once went down in the hood or went anywhere in Milwaukee and looked at a billboard that said, you know, that marketed to inner city kids to come to UWM, which is right down the street. So we just don't see it. So, um, UWM um, definitely needs to do a lot more outreach and um, everybody within the university has an um, obligation to that. That's from the UWM administration to the student association to student organizations, student departments, everybody at the university um, and as well as everybody in the community has some type of obligation um, to the community and I think that's where we fall short because everybody is going to point a finger well so and so UWM UWM can't solve the NPS problem you know what I'm saying um, NPS can't solve its own problem you know because it's not just the schools it's kids are coming to school with a lot of problems from home and the community and things like that. So that's why I was saying that um, even to save money, I think that we can use a lot of these nonprofit community agencies to intervene and help out um, help out uh, in that area. For example, I do, I work at Silver Spring Neighborhood Center, I have my shirt on. Um, it's uh, actually 
uh, community center that's located in Westline Housing Projects on 64th and Silver Spring. And I think it's unique, one of, one of the most unique community centers in the city, being that um, it has so many services that it provides to all of the uh, residents and people that it serves. Basically, it has an um, extension of UWM Nursing Clinic, so it serves people who have um, gap health insurance or people walk into this clinic um, sick. They have a food pantry um, where people come and get, get food every week, have after school program, a daycare, ESL programs, GED, uh, after school program for not only the, uh, the youth, but also a teen program, a teen job readiness program, I mean driver's ed, basketball team, you name it. And those are the type of services that a community center needs to help with as far as, um, you know, when we have kids that um, are coming to school with problems, maybe when they get out of school, if they come to a place like that, they can kind of help them so the next day they can come to school in a, in a little bit better condition. All right. Uh, I don't have any more questions. I don't know what Kyla went. Right. Uh, yeah, I think that, um, and the reason why I'm really passionate about, I'm glad that you asked me these questions is because I am an educational policy and community studies major. So I study the community, um, how it's composed and um, the different problems. We are able to identify problems within the community and there aren't just problems like crime and things like that. There's things like segregated neighborhoods and things like that where kids have to go to their neighborhood school and that's not helping anything with uh, integration and diversity. That's not preparing youth for UWM at any point in time when you're going to a school where everybody looks just like you because everybody is from your neighborhood and they're walking to the same school that you go to because the neighborhoods are segregated. I can't see how that's going to get kids ready for coming to a university like this that's right in the neighborhood that's only 15% minority instead of 80% minority. So that's definitely a, um, a big thing too. So it's not just um, problems, um, academic, like I said, it's community problems, it's policy problems. Um, like I said, uh, it's just, I don't know, it's just, it's just a lot. Are you, a, are you a graduate from MPS yourself? Actually, I um I went to uh, MPS for kindergarten, first grade, and halfway through my second grade year. And my mom actually put me out in the Chapter 220 program, so I was bussed out in Germantown, where I was probably one black face in all my classes, maybe two at the most in all my classes until I graduated high school and came to UWM. So I would at least have to say, being out there, uh, it pre prepared me more for dealing with diversity than I would have been so, uh, set up for um, a culture shock. That's what most most of my mentees do um, acknowledge is that they have a culture shock when they get to UWM coming from MPS and.